during the Renaissance, which is still pretty fresh in our cultural memory. 400 years isn't really that long. We became fully visual thinkers. We became a culture of the representational painting with its flattening of volumes splashed across canvas, plaster, fresco, the Sistine Chapel. And then we invented the printing press. And suddenly, we became a culture of the book, with its sounds turned into shapes, turned into sentences. We judged credibility by clarity and circulation. We learned to respect the authority of language. We put every thought into words and stored it all in books and libraries. We developed perspective, the university formal logic, the scientific method, and the worship of rationality. We became a culture of the line, the horizon line, linear reasoning, the supply curve, notes on a staff. And especially the line of type. All our thoughts broken down into semantic units, converted into letters and placed on a line. We developed a novel. We learned to follow the line of type to read silently, and we consolidated our personalities into private, inner voices. Incidentally, it also became the age of capitalism. Goal-oriented behavior, chains of command, the assembly line. Like all mechanical processes, commerce was much easier to organize when we learned to visualize it, break it into parts, and encode it. We were ruled by the eye and the line, driven into isolation by our sensory bias. That's what it meant to be a visual culture. That was the Gutenberg galaxy. the Industrial Revolution, the telephone wire and the radio signal came along, and we were no longer a culture of the eye or the line. Marshall McLuhan pointed out the following about acoustic space. It is spherical, discontinuous, non-homogeneous, resonant, and dynamic. It was kind of like what Nietzsche called the Dionysian. the world of music, driven by intoxication, creating a shared space where subjectivity began to vanish. Suddenly, the chain was broken. The voices came from everywhere at once. They came through speakers and phones and radios and televisions. Disembodied heads on screens delivered news from across the country and around the world.
we became a massive, unified tribe, all simultaneously aware of everything, hearing the same utterances echoing from the darkness. We became a culture of mass media. And most importantly, with all this resonant stimulus coming from all sides, disconnected from any obvious source, the eye lost its significance. The book became archival. The line of sight was broken. We became a culture of the ear. We became a global village. Here's the thing. Information doesn't leap from the void any longer. Now it's all around us, a total immersion. Experience turning into data, turning into experience. Everything easily captured and encoded in bits and bytes. With the universal medium of the digital, we're suddenly engaged in a process of searching and sensing and filtering at all times. <coughs> it's no longer about the line or the wave. Now it's about the consistency, the texture. All the senses have sublimated as all experience is translated into data. We are constantly in contact with this experiential layer, imprinted upon a digital substrate. <coughs> We're being cognitively sensitized to gaps, boundaries, continuity, pressure and responsiveness. It's all about impulses and synapses and nerve endings and fingertips in the brain. We're adrift in the digital ocean. We've created a tactile culture. <laughs> 